And before we get moving into our show, we actually have a uh, preview coming up. So Lord Mike Lashbroff, of course, uh, we have had conversations with him here about his different passions. He has many different interests, and one of them um, is looking at the situation of uh, the abuse of uh, animals, endangered animals across the world, and he's actually written a book. Um, it's called The Unfair Game, and it's looking, or actually reveals, the atrocities behind um, how uh, uh, lions are raised uh, just for the simple uh, sport of uh, hunting, um, and it really just goes in depth into, at least based on the video preview, um, on, on the horrible things taking place there. So we're going to take a look at a little preview um, of Unfair Game. Today, I can make public the full revelations of my two-year investigation into South Africa's captive bread lion industry. This cruel trade represents one of the worst crimes against nature that I know of. Thousands of lions are bred in captivity to satisfy the market for hunting trophies and to supply bones to the market for so-called medicines in China and the Far East. In April 2019, I commissioned a new covert operation to expose more appalling practices. I called it Operation Chastise. I recruited several undercover operatives, including former members of Britain's Special Forces. They were based in South Africa for many months, collecting information and evidence. My team successfully infiltrated the dark and dangerous lion industry a grim business mired in corruption with links to major organized crime networks. They found some truly shocking examples of brutality and illegality. From the outside, the Morrison Ranch in Free State Province, some 200 kilometers south of Johannesburg, might seem a respectable establishment. It is owned and run by two men, Awi Moray and Thielman de Villiers. Offering game drives and lion cub petting, it even boasts a wedding venue with its own chapel. Game hunting opportunities range from springbok and ostrich to wildebeest and zebra. However, behind the scenes, the lion cubs are kept in filthy conditions and the adult lions are bred for their bones. In gruesome film obtained by my team, the two owners are shown savagely killing several lions on the ranch. In one case, a lioness is shot while sitting in a tree. In an act of barbaric cruelty, she is then shot on the ground a further nine times in seven minutes. In another film clip, Murray is shown executing a sedated lion in the back of a 4x4 truck. De Villiers is also filmed getting out of his vehicle to put more shots into an already wounded lioness. Yeah. Yeah. Another allegedly reputable tourist facility that my team infiltrated is Akwaba Lodge and Predator Park in Northwest Province. It is owned by Nazir Kaji. On its website, it claims to be against canned hunting and its owner claims to love animals. However, Kaji has supplied scores of captive bred lions and tigers, which are killed in canned hunts or skinned for their bones. My undercover team obtained film of a tiger being collected from Aquaba Lodge on the 11th of August, 2019. 
A dealer arrives and meets Kaji, who gives instructions about the payment. Money is then collected from the buyer, an Asian man known as Michael, and handed over to Kaji. The tiger is darted with an overdose of tranquilizers by Kaji with a dart prepared by his foreman. Once the tiger has been shot and killed, it's loaded onto a pickup truck and taken away for processing. It is skinned, deboned, and boiled and will be dipped in alcohol prior to shipping. It will be put together with the bones of 14 dead lions. In photographs taken of the lions at the time they were killed, there are no signs of them having been shot. All of them were euthanized to preserve their skeletons. An adult tiger skeleton is worth up to 20,000 US dollars, while an adult lion skeleton is worth around 4,000 US dollars. Because of this price difference, it's common for lion bones to be passed off as more expensive tiger bones. Tiger fur is often left on one animal to give the impression every bone in a shipment is from a tiger. A month later, the buyer, Michael, and his driver rendezvous with the dealer at a petrol station to collect the consignment of carcasses. The bones are moved to a storage facility in Johannesburg in preparation for shipping to the Far East. Big cap bones command high prices in China in particular, where they are used in pills and potions, which absurdly claim to be aphrodisiacs or to give those who consume them greater strength. Aquaba also breeds ligers, hybrids, which are the offspring of a male lion and a tigress. It is ethically obscene to encourage two different species to mate. Yet that is what goes on in secret at the family-friendly Aquaba Lodge. It is typical for lions to be drugged and bundled into crates before being transported for many hours to a hut. At another venue called San Sushi Safaris, we obtained evidence of a lion being hunted with a pack of dogs. This activity is illegal. The poor lion had been drugged and let loose into a confined area where it was pursued by the hounds and killed within minutes. In Northwest Province, the law states that a lion must be released 96 hours before it can be hunted. Film footage from November 2019 shows a lion released from the back of a pickup. The hunter who was on his way to kill the lion had been delayed, so the animal is released into a small pen. Clearly distressed, the lion climbs a tree in panic. On another occasion, a lion is shown being released from a cage immediately before a hunt, in breach of the 96-hour rule. The poor creature is killed the same day. Elsewhere, my team found evidence of wild lion cubs being captured in Botswana and being brought into neighboring South Africa to be sold into the captive bred lion industry. This is done to widen the gene pool. This revelation blows a hole in the argument that captive bred lions safeguard Africa's wild lion population. The reverse is true. It means wild lions in Africa are more endangered than ever. 
Experts say there may be none left by the middle of the century. There are now an estimated 12,000 captive bred lions in South Africa and a wild population of just 3,000. From the moment they are born, right up until their death and beyond, these captive bred lions are exploited. They are torn away from their mothers when they're just days old. Then they are thrust into the tourist sector where they are petted by holiday makers and beaten or drugged if they don't perform. When they're older, many captive bred lions are killed in canned hunts. This involves so-called hunters paying thousands of dollars to shoot them in an enclosed space from which they cannot escape. Other lions are simply slaughtered for their bones and body parts, which are very valuable in the Asian medicine market. In between, these animals are poorly fed, kept in cramped and unhygienic conditions, and prone to disease because of rampant inbreeding. Operation Chastise is the second time I've commissioned a major undercover operation into this sick trade. Something has gone terribly wrong in a country which I love. I am determined that it must be put right. Previously, I have told how wealthy clients are emailed menus of lions so they can choose which one to kill, like a customer at a fast food restaurant. I've also reported on the tricks being used to smuggle illegal lion trophies around the world. And I divulge the full horrors of Wagambiki Farm in Free State Province, where in a two-day period, 54 captive bred lions were shot and skinned. They were shot through the ear because overseas buyer will not pay for damaged skulls. The scene of carnage at this farm was stomach churning. And the most positive thing to come from this project was the rescue of Simba, a male lion who was destined to be killed in a canned hunt. I arranged for him to be taken into safety after years of maltreatment. He is now living in a peaceful and secure location. By December, when the operation concluded, my team took their findings to one of South Africa's most senior police officers in charge of wildlife. But instead of accepting the dossier of evidence they had prepared, he threatened to arrest them and gave the evidence back. I have called on the South African government to halt this abusive trade, but I have never received any response. Experts have told me of their belief that a major public health incident will occur in South Africa and Asia as a result of the lion bone trade. After the coronavirus pandemic, for how long can South Africa and Asia afford to ignore these serious public health warnings? Please buy my new book, Unfair Game, to find out more about this cruel and dangerous trade. Royalties will go to charities that are working to halt South Africa's despicable captive bread lion industry.